This. 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 It's epic, 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 epic poker. The Epic Poker League, the XFL of the poker world. The XFL is going to be the extra fun league. And something we don't talk about nearly enough until now. But before we get into it, we want to thank everyone for their support of the channel. We love seeing you in the comments, and we couldn't do what we do without you. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a new episode. In the world of professional poker, the Epic Poker League, or the EPL, emerged as a promising venture that aimed to revolutionize the industry. This league was also created to give the best players in the world a platform to continually match skills against each other. Founded in 2011 by Jeffrey Pollack, a former commissioner of the World Series of Poker, the league was envisioned as a player-centric organization that sought to bring integrity, transparency, and excitement to the game. I'd be disappointed if you folded. For old times sake. However, despite initial optimism and a star-studded roster of players, the Epic Poker League experienced a rapid rise and an even quicker fall, ultimately culminating in bankruptcy. So let's explore the factors that led to its creation, the involvement of prominent poker player Annie Duke. I want to wish everybody good luck. Shuffle up and deal. The highs experienced by the league, the reasons for its downfall, and the important lessons that can be drawn from the entire debacle. So the creation of the Epic Poker League was a response to perceived shortcomings in the poker industry. Pollock, driven by a desire to enhance the player experience, sought to establish a league that would prioritize fairness and professionalism. The EPL aimed to implement strict codes of conduct, drug testing, and standardized contracts for players. Additionally, Pollock envisioned a league that would introduce innovative television programming. In the back of my mind, I feel like people have more of an eye on me just to see what's going to happen. But I'm just going in with the mindset of just giving it my all and doing my best. Creating an immersive and engaging experience for viewers. With these goals in mind, the EPL was launched with great fanfare, generating substantial excitement among both players and fans. Annie Duke, a highly respected and accomplished professional poker player, played a crucial role in the Epic Poker League's development. Annie Duke was born on September 13, 1965, in Concord, New Hampshire. She began her journey towards poker stardom at an early age. Duke's passion for card games began during her childhood, where she regularly engaged in games with her family. Her competitive spirit and strategic thinking quickly became evident, setting the stage for her future success in the poker world. Annie Duke has defeated nine of the strongest poker players in the world and wins the first ever World Series of Poker Tournament of Champions. After completing her degree in English and Psychology at Columbia University, Duke decided to pursue a career in the game that had captivated her since childhood. She honed her skills by participating in underground poker games in Billings, Montana. Howard sent her her first stake of $2,400, gave her a few lessons over the phone. She won $2,800 her first month, and now she's here. In 1994, Duke made her debut with the World Series of Poker and quickly established herself as a formidable force. Her exceptional skills in reading opponents, making calculated decisions, and managing risk led to numerous victories and deep runs in various high-profile tournaments. One of Duke's most notable achievements came in 2004, when she won her first WSOP bracelet in the $2,000 Omaha High-Low Split event, earning her a coveted title and solidifying her place among the poker elite. I had had so many heartbreaks at the World Series where I had lost tournaments, so it was so great to get that monkey off my back and finally be like, yeah, you know what, I deserve to be a World Series champion. Throughout her career, she demonstrated remarkable consistency, consistently cashing in major tournaments and earning the respect of her peers. Annie Duke's impact on the poker world extends beyond her playing career as well. She's authored several books, including Thinking in Bets, Making Smarter Decisions When You Don't Have All the Facts, which explores decision-making strategies through the lens of poker. So if you look at the behavior of people at, po at the poker table, you can actually learn a lot about human decision-making. Her work has inspired countless individuals, both within and outside the poker community, to apply critical thinking and logical reasoning to their daily lives. Duke was not only a prominent member of the league, but also served as the commissioner. And the co-founder of the Epic Poker League, uh, and by the name and the players that you have, it seems like Epic is very, very fitting. Thank you. <laughs> Her involvement led credibility and prestige to the EPL, and she was widely regarded as one of the most skilled and knowledgeable individuals in the poker community. Duke's extensive experience and reputation as a poker player added weight to the league's commitment to excellence and to player satisfaction. During its short existence, the Epic Poker League experienced several highs that momentarily fulfilled its promise. 
the league attracted a stellar lineup of talented players, including legends like Phil Helmuth, Eric Seidel, and Jason Mercier. The events organized by the EPL offered sizable prize pools and provided an enticing platform for players to showcase their skills. The innovative television broadcasts featuring comprehensive player profiles. As much as I hate to say it, I guess I'm fighting for respect in the poker world and winning an epic tournament would definitely give me more respect. And captivating storytelling brought the game to a broader audience and captivated viewers. For a brief period, it seemed that the Epic Poker League was on track to becoming a significant player in the poker industry. What made the league unique was that it was exclusionary, who met certain qualification criteria for multi-million dollar lifetime earnings, multiple wins, or cash as a high-level tournaments. We said, well, it should be some combination of um, having performed really well recently, because you have to be relevant today, but also consistency over time. And everyone was supposed to maintain adherence to a specifically defined code of conduct. This code of conduct was heavily enforced and the Epic Poker League voted to suspend the membership of Howard Lederer and deny membership to Chris Ferguson after the U.S. Justice Department filed a motion to amend a civil complaint, alleging that the two players were running a Ponzi scheme. Yes, Scott, there's a new amended complaint from the civil point of view from the Department of Justice today saying that Full Tilt Poker operated a Ponzi scheme through their Full Tilt Poker site. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out our video which goes into more detail. The link is in the description. Despite a promising start, the Epic Poker League's fall from grace was swift and dramatic. The primary factor that led to its demise was financial mismanagement. The league's business model heavily relied on securing substantial sponsorship deals and a lucrative television contract. Unfortunately, these anticipated revenue streams failed to materialize, leaving the EPL in a precarious financial position. The league faced challenges with low television ratings and struggled to attract a significant following, hampering its ability to generate sustainable revenue. These financial difficulties, combined with controversies surrounding the league's structure and governance, ultimately led to its downfall. In the face of mounting financial pressures, the Epic Poker League filed for bankruptcy in early 2012. The league's ambitious vision, once brimming with promise, came crashing down due to a combination of inadequate financial planning, unfulfilled revenue expectations, and a failure to resonate with a broader audience. The collapse of the EPL serves as a stark reminder of the importance of sound financial management, adaptability to market conditions, and a deep understanding of target audiences. Additionally, it highlights the challenges inherent in launching a new venture in a competitive industry, even with experienced professionals at the helm. The rise and fall of the Epic Poker League is a cautionary tale that illustrates the precarious nature of venturing into uncharted territory within a well-established industry. Despite noble intentions and notable individuals like Annie Duke involved, the league ultimately succumbed to financial woes and a lack of widespread appeal. As the poker industry continues to evolve, it's crucial to learn from the mistakes of the Epic Poker League to foster future success and sustainability. And that's it for this one. Thanks so much for checking out the episode. Have you ever heard about the Epic Poker League? Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah.